My Hero Academia Chapter 412. Is All Might finally a full vestige now? And let go of one for all? Why destroy a mere city when you can make Mount Fuji erupt? And why stop the guy who's trying to do this when you can heal his childhood trauma? Yeah. What's up? Welcome to this latest My Hero Academia chapter review. I'm Truth Hero. Happy 2024 to everyone. And let's dive in to the three biggest takeaways from My Hero Academia chapter 412. One, Deku's unique core combinations even after losing Danger Sense. Two, how will Deku balance saving Shigaraki while also stopping him from destroying everything? And three, is All Might now fully within One for All? Boku no Hero Academia Chapter 412 essentially starts out with Deku expending the last of the energy he has with Gear Shift. His time is up, but before that recoil sets in, he has some pretty cool quirk combinations. Deku has Black Whip actually flexing and strengthening his muscles internally. It'd be kinda cool actually to have a quirk that just works out your muscles for you as you go about your day. He then combines these Black Whip contractions with Fa Jin to go to the max and uses wind pressure to perform a Delaware smash which excavates the land and stops Shigaraki's decay of the ground. It's pretty cool that Black Whip can actually flex Deku's muscles and tendons for him and build up the energy within Fa Jin so that Deku doesn't have to focus consciously on using Fa Jin. He can instead focus on floating and avoiding Shigaraki while he builds up to this attack. It's also really impressive that Deku can use gear shift to downshift, go to a lower gear on one of his quirks. In this case, his smoke screen, allowing it to actually last longer and not dissipate, thus gaining him an extra hit on Shigaraki. Unfortunately, after this, his smoke screen is useless because Shigaraki has that search quirk he stole and now knows Deku's weakness as well as his location. So he is about to exploit Deku's recoil from gear shift which I'm sure he'll do in the next chapter, but here he plays into a more psychological warfare gambit. Shigaraki explains how that crying boy Deku wishes so desperately to save is no longer suffering. He changed the lens in which he sees the world, and therefore, there is no suffering for him. Tomura is gone. Only clarity and destruction remain. I find it one, odd that Shigaraki is so suddenly articulate here. Perhaps that little scared boy named Tenko who is suffering is truly no more. Maybe there is nothing to save in Shigaraki now. And two, just how honest Shigaraki is. I mean, the easy thing would be to just continue and let Deku believe that he can actually save you so that he won't use lethal force on you as you're destroying Mount Fuji and Japan. Just let him have that so that it's a way to conquer Deku in this fight. You know that he won't kill you. But instead, Shigaraki is so confident in his abilities, he tells Deku straight up, you can't save me. So he almost taunts the one thing that is keeping Deku in this fight, which is Deku's innate heroism, his desire to save anyone, no matter how evil they are. And Shigaraki is just going for the jugular here. What's even more surprising is not Shimura Nana's appearance here because we know her stance on this. She actually disagrees with Deku and says, you need to stop him. But it's how harsh she is. We're talking about her grandson here. She says, you need to abandon the notion that you can save everyone. He can't be saved. Please destroy my grandson. Some people are beyond saving. Shigaraki is the biggest wall to your heroism because according to Nana, there's no hope for him. Just finish him off with raw power. End this sad story. Comment down below. Is there any circumstance in which someone just can't be saved? I don't mean that, you know, they could come back to society. There are people that definitely need to be in prison forever and could never rejoin society. But is there any situation where someone's soul or their humanity just can't be recovered? Certainly with the death and destruction that Shigaraki has brought and now the destruction of an almost sacred landmark in Japan, Mount Fuji, it's safe to say that Shigaraki, if saved, if, 
if there's even a little redeeming spark inside him, will not be rejoining Japanese society. He will not be living a life outside of prison. But I do think there could be a hero that could help save Shigaraki. The question is, is it Deku? If there's anyone that could, it probably is Deku, but not at this exact moment. The second user, Kudo, explains Deku's desire to save Shigaraki, and I'm glad that it connects back all the way to Bakugo. Deku may be stubborn in this regard, and him trying to save everyone and always be the hero, but at least it goes back to this friendship that has developed with Bakugo, a former bully of Deku's, and yet he still had the heart to try to reach out to him. He has always reached out to anyone in need, and I'm glad that Deku, even in this moment against Shigaraki, for his entire life, up until this point, he's always remained true to that heroism and himself. Deku has never given up on saving anyone, ever. Even Bakugo, when he was relentlessly bullied by him, his pure heart has never wavered, even on his mortal enemy. Kudo, of course, couldn't fathom the idea himself that they should save their mortal enemy, and because of this, he was against Deku becoming a successor of One for All. At the end of the chapter, we see Toshinori fully materialize as one of the Vestige Phantoms, and he tells Deku, you need to let go of One for All. First of all, before we even get into what All Might just said, does this mean All Might is truly dead now? We knew that he was on the verge of death when he was fighting All for One, and that his connection to the Vestige world sort of amped up as he got closer to that point. So now that he is Vestige is fully manifested and talking to Deku in this manner, does that mean that All Might, Toshinori, is dead corporally? Let go of One for All? What could All Might possibly mean by this? So there are a couple scenarios. One, does Deku actually let go of One for All and give it to Shigaraki? I think it'd be funny to see Shigaraki deal with Singularity and him become the 10th user for a second and then explode, but that's not really a great way to end the series. I think if Deku's going to pass on the quirk, he's going to give it to Bakugo. Maybe in this way Bakugo defeats Shigaraki, but in doing so, his life is somehow spared, and the only way to achieve the power to defeat Shigaraki would be if Deku relinquishes his quirk once again and returns to being normal, quirkless Izuku Midoriya. Remember at the beginning of the series, Deku says that this is the story of how I became the greatest hero. It never said anything about Deku going on to live a life as a true adult for the next 30 years, being a hero and fighting crime like All Might did. All it said was he's going to become the greatest hero. What if this means that Deku relinquishes his quirk but in doing so becomes the greatest hero because he saves the person that everyone, not even the vestiges, not even his own grandmother, Shimura Nana, thinks can be saved. He saves the one person who it looks like has no humanity. What if it's a more spiritual victory than a physical one? Let me know down below in the comments. What do you think it means when All Might says, let go of one for all? As always, guys, if you like my Hero Academia content and these chapter reviews, consider enrolling at UA today by subscribing. Thanks for watching. I hope to make many more videos for you guys. And Happy New Year. Happy 2024. Plus Ultra.